Hello, Miranda here. In last Friday's video, I created this limited palette from my set of 36 Mission Gold colors, and this has 11, as you can see. And today we are going to create two paintings, at least that's what I'm hoping for, using this limited palette so that we can see exactly if these are the right color choices or not. I am just using the last sheet out of my Arches watercolor pad. So this is not a block, they're just loose. So I've already taken the paper out, my last sheet, cut it in half, but have no fear. I do have watercolor blocks left and other brands of paper I'm less excited to use. This was just handy, this pad, because you could just pull a sheet out and play on it and not have to have it glued to a block and so It has super thick cardboard on the back. And I'm going to keep that maybe for the backing of some of my paintings and stuff when I frame them. So I'm really excited about having such a nice thick piece of cardboard. Uh, silly thing to be excited about, but uh, I get excited about lots of things really easily <laughs> because <laughs> everything in life is fun. Before we get into the paintings, I wanted to give you a quick update on this little palette because there's a couple things you should know if you're going to do this yourself. These remember in that video if you've seen that if not again it's linked up there were soaked in odorless mineral spirits and it was just the big bottle you could get from the hardware store I don't know the brand because I leave it outside and it's completely faded off but anyway supposedly odorless mineral spirits and we soaked these in there to get the old paint out of them and it's stinky I've tried to leave this open on my desk but the cats keep jumping up there and so I was getting a lot of hair in it so I kind of just stuck this rubber band in it and just kind of shut it like that and it's still really really stinky like you walk over to my art area and you can smell the mineral spirits so that's really unfortunate I'm hoping that it's not going to affect the paint I don't think that it will I'm really disappointed I've looked for these little pans I'm tempted to buy just a whole brand new set, like those t little $10 sets that these pans are in, because I'd like to use these pans. As I mentioned in that video, the wells are so big, you can see I only put a little paint. It was actually three full squeezes of paint in each one, so there's it seems like a lot of paint here. But I like that extra space, I've mentioned this in my other videos, so that when you have your brush and you're dabbing water, you can create whatever dilution of the color you want within the well itself without taking up extra mixing space just for a pure color and a lighter value. So I like these wells. Uh, we broke them. I think every single one of them maybe, but this one is broken. Yeah, maybe these, maybe these two survived. This one's cracked. So we broke them all, getting them out of there with the exception of maybe those. And I still really like the idea of these round pans. So I know I'm holding on to something that really probably shouldn't be. I have empty full pans, but I like this palette because it's skinny. See how skinny that is? And it will hold a brush, which they all do, I mean, pretty much. And the wells are huge. So, and look at all the mixing space and compartments and I can mix over here if I need to. I like the palette itself. That's the debate that I've been having is, you know, try and get paint out of another set that's the only place I can seem to find these little round pans, or what do I do? So if you guys have suggestions or recommendations, let me know below. I'd really appreciate it. I know that was a long update, but let's, let's get painting. These are the two paintings that I've chosen to do today. And this one is one of my friend's dogs and she gave me permission to use this photo in all my paintings so that was really nice and this is an acquaintance of mine uh, we ride dirt bikes in the same area occasionally and he took this photo and I thought it was gorgeous he gave me permission to use this photo so I'm really excited I looked back at this and I thought well maybe I should have chosen some that aren't just all brown colors but I was looking at them and there's a lot of deep blues in this one and greens and yellows and other colors in this one so I'm like well I can I can get away with it they were just kind of what struck my fancy 
and I didn't really want to, to try anything different. I don't want to tape the edges. I want these paintings to go clear to the end, and so the paper is just going to go crazy. So a trick I've done in the past, I've mentioned it in a previous video, is completely wet the back of it, kind of like stretching paper without the staples and all of that. You wet the whole back. You could wet your, this is just a like acrylic plexiglass. You could wet that if you wanted to. Stick this on and then you have to wet the, the whole front too, otherwise it'll just buckle this way. Wet the whole front and then I don't really want to do full wet and wet painting, but I can do a lot of that for the background. But for the dog details, it's going to need to dry out a bit. I'm starting out by masking off some of my lighter areas. So probably in the eyes, maybe a little bit in the nails, maybe across this lip and those little lines right there possibly. I just used my PPO masking fluid pen for that, and then you can see me wetting the back and the front of the paper here, including my acrylic sheet. I'll be using my Cotman round size 10 and a Princeton Select round size 6. May get something smaller out, but I doubt it. I usually end up getting this brush out and then doing the whole painting with it because <laughs> I don't know, it's in my hand already and it has a nice point when it's wet, so. Sometimes that gets me in trouble, so today I just started out getting a slightly smaller brush. Again, I don't know if it's small enough. We'll find out, but those are the brushes I'm using and everything I'm using will be linked in the description box below. I decided to start out doing my background and if you saw my limited palette video, you know that the only green I have in this palette is Hooker's Green because in the Mission Gold version, their sap green was just a little too light for me. So I chose the Hooker's Green, but I can mix that with yellow to get it lighter and I can mix it with some burnt sienna to get it darker and some sepia. I also have indigo in this palette so I have a lot of choices there for that. I put a tree in the background, some little tighter grass there under the tree and then try to darken things up even more. I keep having to do that and you'll see more about that in the end. And I feel way more free when I'm using a limited palette. I feel pretty intimidated when I pull out the big palettes that have 36 colors in them and I guess I do okay when I pull out my core palette. It only has 24 colors, but I'm really used to it, so there is that. And Mission Gold 36 one, though, it just seems like a lot of colors. So this 11 color palette is really refreshing. I'm very much enjoying it. And so the colors look really nice and vibrant right now, but just wait. Just a little side note here. Notice how absolutely flat this paper is staying. It is awesome. I took a two hour break here, so the paper has dried somewhat and you can see that it is a little bit buckled there and here as it dried. So I think when I start again, I'll just wet the back of it because yeah, even that's all dry. And just do the same thing over again because that was impressively flat. One thing you might be wondering when you start your painting again is what color to use. What I like to do is this little secret where you take the square piece of paper, just make sure it's plain white or something neutral that you are used to, and put a hole punch in it. And I could only find my heart hole punch at the moment, but that's really cool because when you're looking at this whole picture, you're not sure, like, oh, this looks uh, orange, orangey yellow, or orangey burnt sienna, or something like that. And when you block out the other colors around it, you can see that it's actually very peach colored. Also, this color here, you're kind of curious, like, well, what color is that exactly? So you block it out, and you look at this, and you can see that it's a very pink color, which you probably would have guessed, but you get the point. I really like this little thing. I keep it over on the side of my desk at all times and can pull it out and just reference different parts of this photo. And it's nice, too, to see how dark it is. And if you want to make extra copies of this, it's really fun because you can take your paint, put this in the spot you want it, you get your paint color, and then you paint right next to it and see if your color is a good match for you. So that's a good idea if you're trying to get the colors that are kind of realistic for the painting itself. And I know in my last video I said, I don't really like painting realistic, you might as well use a photo, but really wanted to test these paints out and I don't think there's any better way than trying to see if what I am intending to get is actually what comes out on the papers. I start off painting session take two with watering the back and the front again. 
And then I'm putting a base coat of burnt sienna mixed with permanent yellow light and a little bit of permanent red. And oh, it just looks so nice. The color is just really nice color. I'm very grateful that what I am intending is coming out on the paper, but I'm having a little bit of trouble with the darks. So I'm not sure if it's the sepia that I try and put in with burnt sienna or what, but it kind of grays it out a little more than I wanted. So I end up having to go back and really warm up those areas. I'm also intentionally putting a lot of green into my darks. I thought that might bring in the background a little bit, but I end up not liking it overall. I think uh, I keep most of it, but I think in the future I might do less of that. And then I went ahead and did the eyes in the dog because, you know, when you're doing a painting, you're watching someone else, you're like, do the eyes, do the eyes, please do the eyes, because I just can't see it as a dog until you do the eyes. So I'm like, okay, I better do the eyes so we can see that it looks like a dog. <laughs> And then I just keep trying to darken things up, and here's where I'm actually pulling in the more concentrated version of the Burnt Sienna to really try and warm up this painting. I just think it was way too cool. And then once again, I try and darken the darks on the paw, under the paw, and under the chin and stuff, and I just, I'm just having trouble getting dark enough darks, and maybe my mixtures aren't right, or I'm just too picky about it, or whatever. So I let the painting dry again, and you can see I'm just lifting a little bit from the ear before I wet the back and front again, which I do here, you can see that, and I am warming up this painting even more, and putting in even darker darks, and in my last video, I'm like, just, or not my last video, but the one with the farm truck, I'm like, just don't be afraid, put your darks in, like, right away, and I kept thinking I was, but it just was never dark enough, so you can see I put them some pretty serious darks here and then just kind of blend them out and that really helps a lot. I probably could have even gone darker in a few areas, but it's really hard to judge that, you know, when you're in the middle of the process. I really will probably take a step back and look at this painting for the next several days after I consider it done on this video and still probably change a thing or two. If you remember, clear back in the beginning of the video, we put some masking fluid on here and we need to take that off and get some real paint on those areas. So this painting is mostly dried. Wow, this stuff is being stubborn. Maybe you shouldn't wait. Like, when did I start this, three days ago? <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't wait three days to take your masking fluid off. That makes those areas so bright, holy moly. And as you know, if you use masking fluid, that you use it to preserve your whites, but sometimes you don't need them white white. You just need to be able to have a really dark color next to it before you do whites. And so using the masking fluid is great, but you do need to go back and tint it most of the time. Oh, I forgot to get the masking fluid off the eyes. The most important part. That would have been bad. Wow, that is amazing. I just finished tinting the rest of the masking fluid areas and just altered the corner of his head just a little bit. Even though his head sticks up a little bit there, I felt like it was just a little too much. In fact, I might even go back and soften it some more. In the beginning of the video, I said we would be doing two paintings to try out this limited palette, but this one has taken me forever. So I don't have time for two paintings. However, the good news is that means there's more for you to watch later on this channel. So that's always a bonus and also means that I have been pretty curious about this paint. So it's professional grade. I'm having some trouble with it. The colors that I picked though are great. I was able to get any color that I wanted. The problem I was having though is that I would keep putting a layer on and it'd be like the perfect color and then I would come back when it dried and I'd be like, where'd all the color go? That's probably partly my fault, I would think, because I put a lot of water on it, you saw, to keep the paper flat. And so that extra water on top of putting water in the pans to put it on the paper diluted the color a lot. And I want to know how this paint will compare to core. So what I'm going to be doing is, since I have the little drawing here, I'm gonna make it really fast and trace it out on two pieces of paper. And the reason I'm doing two is because now that I have the experience of doing this painting already once with these colors and the Mission Gold paints, it's not really fair to just switch over to Core and do just Core now again because I have the experience of doing this exact painting with these paints and I think that would be a disadvantage. Like, a disadvantage to the Mission Gold paints. I'm going to do it again with Mission Gold paints and 
with core paints and see what I think. Just pitting them against each other. See if I still have the problems that I had with this. Like I would put color down here and I think that is so black and then it's not. And again, it could be just an experience with these watercolors. It could be an experience in general. I'm not really sure, but I have to know now. I absolutely have to know. Subscribe if you want to see that video coming up and other watercolor videos and subscription box videos. Yeah, we're going to be pitting Mission Gold paints against core paints in this painting again. So here is the first attempt with Mission Gold. And subscribe to get notified when that next video comes out pitting Mission Gold against core with this exact same painting again, even though it was kind of annoying to me and I'm not sure I want to do it again. I'm going to do it again because I have to know these things. <laughs> That's the mission of my life is to find all the answers. If you found something useful in this video, go ahead and hit the like button. It actually helps my channel out. I don't know if you knew that. And then if you want to see that upcoming battle and all the other content on my channel, go ahead and check out my channel. Make sure you like the content on it before you do this, but go ahead and subscribe. And then you'll hit the little bell and make sure you click all notifications. Otherwise, YouTube will only tell you once in a blue moon when I upload a video. So that all notifications thing is kind of important. All right, we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. Yeah, let's get into it. You wanna be blind? I blind you. This boy's all gone. Maybe it's a girl. This girl's all gone. <laughs> this paper is all gone. That's better. I'm gonna start out by masking off some... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, phone. <laughs> I'm just going to stop this recording because I have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs>